Welcome back to our lecture series, Math 1220, Calculus 2 for students at Southern Utah University. As usual, I'll be your professor today, Dr. Andrew Misseldine. Now, you might have been thrown off by the title here if you're reading it, Math 2280, what is this? Um, what we're going to be doing is starting Chapter 9 in James Stewart's Calculus textbook, uh, which is based upon the topic of differential equations. A differential equation is an equation that involves a derivative of some kind. That is, we'll, we'll have an equation that involves some unknown quantity, uh, I should say unknown function, y equals f of x, and it, the equation is going to involve a finite number of its derivatives. So we have an equation that could be involving the first derivative, the second derivative, third derivative, etc. Um, we'll, we'll come and talk about that a little bit more detail in just a second. Now, the differential equations turn out to be very, very important in not just mathematics, but in broad science as well, as one can use differential equations to approach many, many, many uh, real life applications. And so one cannot uh, undersell how important the study of differential equations, how, how important that study is. Now, it is not our desire to do an extensive coverage of uh, differential equations. Instead, we plan to do just an extended trailer. Uh, most universities will have at least an introductory course to differential equations. At Southern Utah University, that class is Math 2280. Um, and of course, uh, other programs might have extensive courses in uh, differential equations, many reaching into a graduate program. Differential equations is pretty important, and the prerequisite at a university is typically going to be calculus 2 with maybe uh, some linear algebra because uh, there's a lot of linear algebra and differential equations. Uh, some universities will require it, some don't. It depends It depends on how they approach the course. So let's talk about differential equations. Differential equations, like I said, um, they're, they're equations that involve functions, which typically we'll call that function y. Um, the solution to a differential equation will be a function. Uh, it'll be a function f, right? So what I want you to do is to try to compare differential equations with algebraic equations you've seen in the past. Where in algebraic equations, you have uh, you have some algebraic combination of the variable x, for which the variable x is typically a number, a quantity of some kind. With a differential equation, we're going to have these combinations of the function y, where again, here y is a function. Now in, the, in an algebraic equation, you'll have like x squared, x cubed, x to the fourth. You have these powers of x showing up. In a differential equation, the powers of y are actually going to be the first derivative, the second derivative, the third derivative, etc. And so solving a differential equation means looking for a function y which satisfies the differential relationship. Uh, the order of a differential equation is going to be the highest derivative present in the in the, in the differential equation. In this course, we'll be mostly interested in first order differential equations. You might see some in the homework questions involving second order or higher, but for the most part, we're gonna be focused on solving uh, special types of first order differential equations. Let's give you an example of one. So this right here is a first order differential equation. Y prime is equal to X times Y. So how you wanna interpret this equation is the following. We're looking for a function, y, whose derivative is the same thing as just multiplication by the variable x. Because again, y is a function, it's a function of x. So can we find a function whose derivative is just diff is no different than just multiplying by x? You could see how that might actually be sort of a useful information. It's like, okay, uh, derivatives can be complicated at times with the chain rule, the product rule, the quotient rule, etc. If I knew the derivative was just multiply by x, you could use that for efficiency of some kind. Now in this video we're not going to really talk about how one finds a solution of a, of a differential equation. I mostly just want to convince you of what it means to be a solution, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take as our candidate f of x equals e to the x squared over 2 power. And I claim this is a solution. This is a solution to the differential equation. Well, how would one check that? Well, when it comes to an equation, you want to take your, your variable assignment and you're going to want to plug this into the left side of the equation and the right-hand side of the equation. So if we consider the left-hand side, we want to take the derivative of, of our substitution y here. 
So what is the derivative of f of x? By the usual rules of derivatives, because we have an exponential expression, uh, the outer derivative will just spit back out itself, e to the x squared over 2. But then we have to multiply it by the inner derivative, x squared over 2. Uh, that, by the power rule, is going to give us a 2x over 2. You'll notice, of course, that the 2s here cancel. And we end up with simply just x times e to the x squared over 2. And when you compare this to the right-hand side, the right-hand side is supposed to be x times y, which if you take x times f of x here, you're going to end up with x times e to the x squared over 2. And Bob's your uncle. You see that the left-hand side and the right-hand side are actually equal to each other. So, in fact, this right here is, where did it go? This is a solution to our differential equation. But one thing we're going to see about differential equations is that solutions are not necessarily unique. Uh, take, as another example, take y to equal the function g of x, which is given as 3 to the times e to the x squared over 2. Now, when you look at this one, take the left-hand side here, we're supposed to take the derivative of g. Well, the derivative of g is going to be 3 times e to the x squared over 2 times x. Well, that's just the same thing as 3x e to the x squared over 2. But if you switch things up a little bit, you get x times 3e to the x squared over 2. And that's the same thing as x times g of x. So you can see that in this situation, we have a second solution to a differential equation. Now, this might not be any surprise, given that algebraic equations uh, can have multiple solutions, right? Quadratic equations typically have two solutions. Uh, maybe that's no surprise here. Now, in some respect, we do want to consider these two solutions one and the same thing. Uh, what I mean is, in the following context, if we take y to equal c times e to the x squared over 2, notice that y prime is going to equal c x e to the x squared over 2, which is the same thing as x times c e to the x squared over 2. This is just x times y. And so this right here y equals c times e to the x squared over 2, where c is just any real number, uh, this actually turns out to be a more general solution to this differential equation. And the example f and g that we had before are just specific instances of this example right here. The first one where we take c to equal 1, and the second one where we take c to be equal to 3. We could choose any, any real number. We're going to come back and talk about this a little bit more in just a second. Um, so in the meanwhile, I want to take a look at another example of this. Uh, so let's take the differential equation y prime equals 1 half y squared minus y. This is a first order differential equation. What we're claiming is that the, we want to find a function whose derivative is equal to just a quadratic expression of the original function, 1 half y squared minus 1. Now, it might, again, at this early stage, it might not exactly be obvious to, to, the, to the viewer why would someone want to solve such a differential equation. But And we're not even going to talk about how. So we're skipping the why, we're skipping the how. All we're doing right now is verifying that this right here represents a family of functions because you take any parameter C that you want right here. You can pick any real number C you want, and this would be a solution to this differential equation. Now, to do that, we check the left-hand side and the right-hand side. The left-hand side, we want to check the derivative of the proposed function. So taking its derivative, we get 1 plus c e to the t over 1, or 1 minus c e to the t. In this situation, our variables in play is c here. That's no big deal. Take the derivative. By the quotient rule, we're going to get low d high. Take the derivative of the top. We're going to get c e to the t and then we subtract high d low the derivative of the bottom is going to be a negative c e to the t like so square the bottom here we go just doing our little poem right here we're going to leave the denominator factored there's usually never a benefit of multiplying out the denominator when it comes to a fraction like this um, distributing and combining like terms in the numerator, though, actually will prove to be profitable. Distribute the c e to the t right there. Um, since we have a negative here and a negative here, that's actually a double negative. 
like so distribute this c e to the t right here actually now that i mention it uh there's a c e to the t common to both let's factor this out again this is a this is a positive there factor out the c e to the t what's left over is one minus c e to the t and one plus c e to the t all over one minus c e to the t squared uh, you're going to see that the c e to the t's in the numerator will cancel uh, the ones will combine to give us a two and so the derivative of our function is going to be 2c e to the t over 1 minus c e to the t quantity squared. That's what we get for the derivative of this function. Let's compare this to the right-hand side. Uh, the right-hand side of the function, sorry, of the equation, uh, that should be, that should be 1 half y squared minus one. So taking the function we had here, let's plug it in one half times, well, what was the function again? You can see it. Uh, we can still see it right here. We're going to take one plus C E to the T over one minus C E to the T quantity squared minus one. And so what we want to do is we want to show that this is, we want to check, is this equal to the derivative that we found earlier? Um, it's that's a parenthesis right there. Uh, so we want to check that. So it's going to take a little bit of work to do. So let us begin by trying to combine some like terms right there. That's we'll find a common fraction. Now notice we have a one half in front. We'll just leave that alone for right now. If you're squaring a fraction, that means you square the top and you square the denominator. But again, we're going to leave the denominator factored. Um, in order to combine the fractions, I need to write 1 uh, with a common denominator, 1 minus c e to the t quantity squared. Uh, as it's 1, that'll be the numerator as well. Now, in order to combine some like terms, and actually, if you're times it by 1 half, I can just stick that in the denominator. So we're going to get 2 times 1 minus c e to the t squared. Now, in the numerator, we need to foil some things out. If you foil the 1 plus c e to the t squared, you're going to get 1 plus 2c e to the t uh, plus c squared e to the t, 2t, like so. That's the first bit. And then we're going to subtract from it a 1, a minus 2c e to the t, and then a plus c squared e to the 2t. Sorry, I kind of ran out of space there. Uh, but there will be some terms that cancel. There's going to be a 1 minus one, they get each other. There's a c squared e 2t, they get each other. And then the other ones that are left over, this is actually a double negative again, you're gonna get some positives. And so as you add those together, we end up with four c e to the t all over two times one minus c e to the t squared. Um, of course, two goes into four two times since you're left with a two c e to the t over one minus c e to the t squared and so this is what our right hand side turned out to be if we plug in this function and if we come back and compare uh, where did we put it oh it's right here two c e to, uh, two c e to the t over one minus c e to the t squared. So you can see that those two expressions are in fact one and the same thing. So this shows us that every, every function, every function of this form is a solution to this differential equation right here, where it didn't actually matter what the parameter c was, it's gonna turn out to be the same thing. So this shows us how one checks if a function is a uh, solution to a differential equation or not. Again, I haven't yet talked about how one finds that. We'll get to that in the future. We just want to clarify that we understand what a differential equation means and how one can verify whether we have a solution or not a solution.